morning. Good morning. So this is the first week of Advent. And I wanted to start off with uh, breaking that down a little bit. So the word Advent means the arrival, the definition is the arrival or appearance of a notable person, thing, or event. Also in church, in the church, it is the first season of the church year. So in Advent, we anticipate the birth of Jesus, his coming into the world as an infant, and we also anticipate Jesus' second coming, the time when he'll come to fulfill the promise of God's kingdom. The season of Advent represents many things to different people in our culture. It's a time of festivity and celebration as we celebrate uh, the upcoming birth of Jesus Christ, and we spend precious time with our family and friends. It's a time when we gather to keep the lights on at the very darkest time of the year. It's also a time of pregnant anticipation as we wait our Savior's coming. We're pregnant with Mary, waiting for Jesus. It's a time for quiet reflection as we consider our decisions, decisions that we've made, paths that we've chosen, and reflect on where we may need to change direction and ask forgiveness from God and others. It's also a time of action, a time when we are purposely mindful of the needs of others, and a time when many people and organizations are more intentional about helping others. In this first week of Advent, we're called to alertness. It's not the kind of alertness that causes our flight or fight response to kick in. It's not that immediate call to heightened alertness that we can only sustain for a short period of time. Instead, we're called as individuals and as Christ Church to maintain alertness over the long term, to live in a state of hopeful watchfulness. <coughs> So when I was uh, preparing this sermon, I had this image of an inner antenna where we receive and transmit God's love and hope. And through God's love for us in the world, we receive God's saving grace in our lives. And through that, we work with others to reconcile uh, and repair our own lives as well as all of creation. The signal is always present. God is always present and active, whether we perceive that in our lives or not. And in the season of Advent, we're called on to stay alert and awake to God's presence in our midst, to pay attention to that signal with intention. During Advent, we are called to awareness and gratitude for the blessings in our own lives and also we're called to pay attention and respond to the needs and the struggles of others. So I wanted to, in Reader's Digest this week, they had um, a section of small articles and it was called um, Giving Till It Helps. And one of the pieces I, I wanted to share today because uh, it was about, a, she's nine years old, this girl is nine years old. And uh, I thought it was such an example of staying awake and alert to the needs of others. Uh, her name is uh, Chloe Thompson, and she lives in California. And every day when she walks to school, she goes past, um, passes a lot of homeless people on her way. And she wanted to do something about that. She felt very bad about that. And so I imagine with the help of her mom, she started to make these little bags, little square bags out of cloth. And she put supplies in them, shampoo and soap and different things, toothpaste that homeless people um, might need and want to use. And as she would go to school in the morning, she would uh, deliver these bags to the folks that she passed, which is really sweet. And, uh, but now, it's a nonprofit organization. So when you think about that, like this nine-year-old kid uh, was you know, aware of other people's um, needs, and she decided to do something about it, and now she is, uh, I don't know if she's the CEO, but she certainly was <laughs> instrumental in getting a nonprofit organization you know, started. And I think that's the kind of intention and intention that we're talking about. Sharing God's love with all of our neighbors, especially those who are the most vulnerable. 
In the gospel today, we see Jesus. Now, they're on the Mount of Olives at this time, and he is responding to the disciples' question about the end of the age. He tells them that not only will no one know when that time is to come, but also they're not going to know who's awake and who's not when it happens. Just because people seem awake, they may or may not be. And like us, the disciples aren't called to judge whether or not anyone else is awake and alert. That's God's job. He says, stay awake, stay alert. When the sun returns, it'll be a shock to those who are not expecting it. So you need to stay awake. In Thessalonians chapter 5, Paul tells his readers, and it's not, um, you know, it's similar to the, the reading we had today from Paul in Romans. He says, let us not fall asleep like others do, but let us keep awake and sober. Put on the breastplate of faith and love, and for a helmet, the hope of salvation. Like the early Christians, we are asked to abide in faith and hope and love. And not to judge others, but to gird up and be ready ourselves. <clears throat> so in some of this waiting, we act. But we also wait during this time of Advent. We wait with anticipation and joy during the season. So I was reading um, uh, Frederick Buechner, and he is a contemporary author and theologian. And he describes the anticipation we experience in the season of Advent in his uh, book, Whistling in the Dark. And so I wanted to share this image with you because it's such a quiet, hopeful image. Um, it's like the anticipation I feel when I hear the words to Silent Night, when we sing Silent Night, like the miracle is about to happen. Wait for it. So Beekner says, in the silence of midwinter dusk, there is, far off in the deeps of it, a sound so faint that, for all you can tell, it may be only the sound of silence itself. So you hold your breath and you listen. The extraordinary thing that is about to happen is matched only by the extraordinary moment just before it happens. He says, Advent is the same as that moment. <clears throat> he goes on to describe a Christmas scene where there's hustle and bustle and shoppers, and he says, finishes it by saying, and if you concentrate just for an instant, far off in the deeps of you, somewhere you can feel the beating of your heart. And for all its madness and lostness, not to mention your own, you can hear the world holding its breath. It's a powerful image of hopeful alertness. As brothers and sisters in Christ and as individuals, we live in that extraordinary moment this month. We hold our breath and listen. We listen and watch for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ, for the baby in the manger, for the message of the man, Emmanuel, and for the majestic son coming in glory to fulfill the kingdom of God. In Advent, we're remembered, we're reminded to wait in hope with eyes and hearts open, stayed on the hope and the promise of salvation and eternity. Today, we're called on to stay awake Keep alert to wait and watch. As Beekner says, hold our breath and listen for our Lord's coming. Now we're challenged to listen through the clamor of the everyday busyness of our lives. Through the distractions, through the work day, through getting dinner on the table, through the news <coughs> and all its warnings about everything from global warming to the adverse health effects of your favorite food. And we talk about Cairo's time, God's time, and we await the future knowing that God's time is really not our time at all. The good news for us 
is that we are also living in that time now. The kingdom of God began with the birth of Jesus. It'll be fulfilled when Jesus returns. In the meantime, we live in the reign of God. We experience the love of God every day. We can see the needs of others through our faith. And we're alert, which allows us to act and frees us to do the work of God every day. The Apostle Paul tells his audience in his letter to the Romans today to put on the armor of life, to put on the Lord Jesus Christ. We're called to live in the promise of the kingdom of God, the reign of God that is here in the present moment. And as Christians in community and individuals, we're challenged to look for Christ's presence in every person, especially those in whom God's light is difficult to see. We stand with those who are oppressed and in need. We feed our brothers and sisters who are hungry. And we try to respond with loving kindness to whatever comes up along the way, loving others through our actions in the world. As the body of Christ, we live in the promise as we gather to worship and hear the word of God, as we confess our faith, receive the sacraments, and love one another. And finally, I, I want to leave you with one, uh, one thought. And I know that probably a lot of you have devotions maybe that you do every day during the season of Advent, and I know there are a lot of Advent calendars and those sort of things out there. But whether you do or not, as you head out into this week, the first week of Advent, and into the daily routine of your life, I invite everyone to just take a moment each day. Take a moment to slow down and reflect on where you see God present in your life and in the world. Reflect on the season of Advent, what it means. Reflect on your blessings and to pause and hold your breath and just listen. Amen. Oh,